three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really, really stoked for today's guest because we're going to cover a topic that I don't think Scott and I have really talked about, but the way that he presents it is a little unique. So I'm really, really excited. But before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, are you, are you excited? Mark, I am very excited. Well, let's talk to Manesh Bindi. So if you don't know who Manesh Bindi is, he is a wealth manager and uh, for... Actually, he's, he's a wealth manager for, for gold and silver. So he basically has this incredible uh, sort of income stream of investing in gold and silver. So if, if you go to the site, goldandsilverforlife.com, uh, it, it's a really interesting uh, sort of investment uh, strategy. So Manesh, I'm going to let you kind of explain it for us, if you would. Firstly, thank you so much for, uh, yeah. for having me. Are you actually using a walking desk right now? Manesh, sitting's the new smoking. You know, I'm standing right now. I'm just wondering, like, if I've, never, I've never done an interview with anyone who's, who's used a walking desk before. That looks really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, am I throwing you off? I've had a few <laughs> guests. Where, like... No, it's just, it's very, it's very, no, no, it's fine. Um, I'm, I was thinking of getting one, so when I get back to London, I'm gonna. I'm thinking of, of buying one. So, yeah, I'm not walking very fast. I mean, it's it's great. Yeah. So, uh, gold and silver for life. What we do is we help people generate an income, a cash flow income, monthly with gold and silver. I think the number one biggest problem for gold and silver investors has been the fact that this wealth transfer that everyone was promised hasn't happened yet. Um, and I think that's uh, a friend of mine, David Morgan, uh, has a really great quote. You know, the gold and silver markets are either going to bore you out or they're going to scare you out. One or the other uh, is going to happen. And then the ones, the people that stay in will make all the money at some point. The question is, we don't know. Nobody knows when that some point is going to come. And with the strengthening of the U.S. economy and everything that we've seen, and obviously some people think that the U.S. economy is still weak and the numbers aren't showing that. The numbers are showing some 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 good strength. Um, I'm not talking about stability. Stability and strength are two different things to me. Uh, so based on that, I don't know when the wealth transfer is going to happen. I don't know when it's going to suddenly go to ten thousand dollars an ounce overnight. I don't know any of that. What I do know is that gold and silver have to be a part of a balanced portfolio. Uh, and even if they grow at just eight percent a year, like they have done since the seventies. Um, and, and, and hedged you against inflation, you should have them in your portfolio. The thing that interests me a lot is why most people in the world have most of their assets in real estate and the stock market. And the reason I think that is, is because the stock market is more volatile and real estate generates a cash flow. The truth is you can use the same tools that you use to generate a cash flow uh, in the stock market and real estate in gold and silver. And most people don't know about that because it's a little of misinformation that's been out there. Um, so that's what we do. We just help people generate a cash flow income on gold and silver. We've been doing it since 2010. We've got clients in 46 different countries. Um, yeah, that's what we do. So Manesh, let's, let's rewind the tape because a lot of people ask me like, well, how do you wake up one day and be like, invest in raw land? Like, how did you wake up one day and be like, Hey, let's, uh, let's get investors to return on in gold and silver and, and have a cash flow. Well, um, I actually, I didn't just wake up one day and I do that as I'm sure you didn't just wake up one day and invest in land. Right. Um, right. for me, it was a 2008 market crash and I was actually teaching people how to trade. Uh, my background started when I was 16 years old, working with my dad, um, negotiating new build real estate deals. Uh, and these were um, where we'd get prop discounts on new builds and then sell them on to investors. Um, and 
from then I started teaching trading and I started doing trading and this, that, and the other. And after 2008, a lot of our clients lost a lot of money. And one thing that I was dissatisfied, as did everyone, right? And um, one thing that I was personally dissatisfied by was, you know, us as educators, we're allowed to put all the disclaimers that we want in front of people to say, hey, this is risky. You should be careful about this. And then once they sign that disclaimer, it's pretty much done, right? We're, our responsibility um, ends there from a legal perspective, as long as they are completely aware of all the risks in the investment. That didn't quite sit right with me because we were talking about leverage. We were talking about how to use leverage. And that's the main thing that screwed people. In 2008, if you weren't sitting on a leveraged portfolio, by 2010, you were in profit higher than where you were in 2008, right? And so it really messed with me that even though I was getting the disclaimer side, I was basically saying, don't point this gun at your foot and pull the trigger. Are you okay with that? And people would say yes, but then I was giving them the gun anyway, right? Um, and I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't happy in myself uh, that I was doing that. So I wanted to focus on safe investing. Between 2008 and 2009, I started investing in gold and silver myself. And then my goal was really to see whether we could make safe investing as exciting as the risky stuff. Uh, and that's why we focused on, on gold and silver because arguably the safest assets on the planet um, over time, even though I'm a firm believer in, in a balanced portfolio. Uh, and our, my main goal was to see, okay, can we help people invest in assets, whatever they are, uh, with a safe strategy that anyone anywhere in the world can do. And, you know, since 2010, clients in 46 different countries using the exact same strategy that's still working and has never been changed since. Um, I think we've proven the fact that safe investing can be exciting. The only thing that matters is an individual's ability to stick with it. And I think that's wow. the hardest part. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I mean, I mean, Mark, doesn't that always come back down to the, the, the need to stick to something, right? Like you got to stick with it. Um, I mean, I've known people that, you, you know, like they, they, they're losing money on a portfolio, so whether it doesn't matter what it is, stock or whatever. And then, especially on something that moves up and down, right? Like stocks, bonds, whatever it is. And then they get scared and then they sell off. And I'm like, stop, stop. If you're selling, you're absolutely locking in your losses. Like, unless you think it's going to go to zero, don't sell. Yeah. And, you know, I think that you, I think no matter what it is, you got to stick to it. Yeah. yeah. And my, my basic premise and philosophy of safe investing is that a balanced portfolio needs three things. It needs real estate, prime real estate. It needs the U.S. stock market as a whole via an index fund or something like that. And then it needs the commodity of whatever cycle we're going through right now. Right now is the gold and silver cycle when you look at monetary history. So some form of balance of those things will give you, uh, I mean, since 1972, that portfolio was a 10.04% compounded annual growth rate without you doing anything besides buying it and leaving it alone. Uh, what we're doing is taking that return and saying, hey, how do we boost it up by generating a safe cash flow of 1% to 2% a month, nothing risky, never risking the underlying principle. And when you look at those returns, it's just phenomenal returns. The key point is, do you have the patience to stick with it? And are you into investing for the long-term wealth or are you into investing for the short-term entertainment? That's, 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 a, that's an interesting question. So of all the assets, all the commodities – why gold and silver? Well, <clears throat> we're, we're sitting on a repeating 38 year money cycle. Uh, and I go into this a lot more in, in a webinar, um, but we're sitting on a 38 year money cycle that has happened ever since the start of, of so-called money uh, and recorded history. Um, and on basically what happens is, is that a government or a ruler uh, issues a form of currency that is not gold and silver. Uh, someone along the line relaxes the rules on how that currency should be generated. Uh, that currency is then overgenerated, i.e. causing inflation, and then the currency loses value and it goes back to gold and silver. And that happens on average, on average every 38 years. And this is the longest cycle that we've had 
uh, without a rebalance. So at some point, there will be a rebalance to gold and silver. I don't think zombies are going to walk the earth like some of my peers in the gold and silver space think is going to happen. Um, and, you know, I don't think that you're going to have the Armageddon that most people are thinking. I think it's just going to be a simple Federal Reserve revaluation uh, on the books. And suddenly the people that own gold and silver will be phenomenally wealthy and everybody else won't, uh, will, will lose a lot of money and they won't even know it. Yeah, very, yeah it's very interesting. Um, Scott, what are you smiling about? Uh, man, I'm thinking I need to buy some gold, <laughs> some gold and silver. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, you know, Damian Lupo, uh, who talks about uh, qualified retirement plans a lot, loves gold and silver. He actually likes taking the physical bars yeah. of gold and silver. Um, what's your take on the physical asset versus um, investing uh, through when like exchange? Yeah, so the way that we do it, you're still taking a physical asset. You're just owning it via an exchange-traded fund structure. Uh, the exchange-traded fund has a vault with all the gold and silver in it. Um, that's how the, the funds work. If you're, using, if you're using futures contracts at that point, you're betting on the price speculation. Uh, so you're not actually taking possession of the gold and silver until the contract comes to, comes to maturity. Um, as far as the physical argument goes, uh, I think physical buying physical is a great idea up to a certain point after which it becomes inefficient for an investor. So if you've got more than five to 10% of your net worth in physical gold and silver, uh, I think you're, you're, you're probably um, lacking in the returns that were possible for you. Just like our clients have generated one or 2% a month income uh, that, that will, that's a hit that you've taken since 2008 or 2009. Um, the main problem with the physical side of it is that people don't actually convey the cost of physical ownership uh, as accurately. What they do is they talk about, you know, oh my God, if the world dies tomorrow, then you're going to need your physical gold to exchange it. I have news. If there's zombies walking the planet and there's Armageddon, you don't need physical gold. You're going to need a gun and some food. Right. You know, and no one's going to care about your physical gold and food. Um, so uh, I, I just look at it and I think, you know, when you factor in the cost of physical gold ownership, which are, I mean, we can run through them now. There's a cost on entry so that you have to pay a premium to the spot price. If anyone's not familiar with the gold market, the spot price is just the net market price of gold and silver. Um, you have to pay a premium on the spot price, which we, I like to look at about 10%. I've seen it go all the way up to 70% when you look at jewelry and, and things like that and these multi-level marketing companies and, and, and situations like that. Uh, but let's just factor in 10%. Then you've got your storage costs because you really don't want that gold and silver sitting in your house, uh, depending on where you live, right? You don't want it sitting in your house. If you don't get it stored, then you can take away the, the storage costs at $35 a month. $35 a month for 10 years is four thousand two hundred dollars and i'm not that good at maths off the top of my head i just recorded a webinar on this so uh, i just prepared a webinar on this so i know the numbers and then if you take that 50 if you invested fifty thousand dollars in physical gold and silver over 10 years it would growing growing at eight percent a year so i'm not taking into account any of the fantasies of wealth transfer that people are having right um right and i still th i'm i'm a, i'm a believer in that wealth transfer i just don't think it's going to happen tomorrow um, so if you take an 8% a year growth over 10 years, that $50,000 will be worth 108,000. When you take away the premium on entry into that physical gold, which was, let's say $5,000, and you take away the premium on exit, because no gold dealer is going to give you the market price of it, because they need to make a profit. These are businesses. Let's add that to 10%, which would be $10,000 at that, at that time. And then you add in the storage costs, your actual your actual $50,000 investment doesn't generate you $108,000 in cash. What it actually generates you is a $36,000 return, cash return on top of the $50,000 that you put in, which means the cost of physical gold ownership without the wealth transfer is around 18% of your money, 18% uh, nice. of your future profit. I don't know about you, but I would, you know, I would rather not, waste 18% of my profits, especially because while you're holding it over that 10 years, 
with the physical, you can't generate a cash flow. Whereas with the way that we've been doing it, you're generating your one or 2% a month. So regardless of the gold going up and down, you're making your income. And at the end of it, you've got your 12 to 26% a year that you've also generated on top of the cost. Now, here's the reason why there's a lot of negativity with uh, exchange traded funds and a lot of miseducation. Because the cost of ownership through an exchange traded fund of gold and silver is 0.4% of on top of the spot price. And so it makes a lot of sense why the physical guys are, are, are uh, respectfully um, crapping all over the exchange traded fund that was, support, that was set up by the World Gold Council and audited three times a year uh, and, and covered under, under every single legal jurisdiction, that, that legal requirement that you need. One of the safest assets on the planet, these exchange rated funds, one of them had a billion dollars of investment within the first three days. You know, and one of my friends is the ex-investment director of the World Gold Council. I asked him, I said, there's so much negativity about these, these ETFs. You know, what, what are you, why aren't you defending them? You know, you've created them. Why aren't you defending them? He goes, because our market is the institutional market. The market that these guys are dealing with are retail investors. The money isn't enough for us to spend time allocating resources on fighting that misinformation. So I said, well, I'll take on that battle then and, and, see, and see what happens, right? But it makes sense to, listen, I think everyone should have a business. Um, I think these guys that are selling physical gold and silver should have a business. They've got costs and things like that. There should definitely be a premium on the gold they're selling. I just want people to know the truth about what it actually costs. And then somebody who's an intelligent investor can make the decision themselves. But it doesn't make, it's, it's easy to see why all these guys are, are, are crapping all over the ETFs when they have to charge premiums of 10 to 15% on gold and you can buy an ETF for 0.4% a year. Yeah, I mean, that, that totally makes sense, which, which kind of leads me to the next question. And I don't know if you've answered it, but what is the worst advice you see or hear given in your area of expertise? Um, that you should buy a lot of physical gold and silver. I think that is single-handedly the worst advice. There's a phone ringing over there. So I, I'm, no. I, is, is it interrupting yeah. the audio? Or Min Min it, yeah, that, Minesh is in uh, Medellin, Colombia right now. Columbia, yeah, so, we can just keep this really real and just run with the fire. I don't think you guys should edit this out, by the way. I think this oh, we don't edit we're, anything, we're, don't we're worry. Okay, cool. We'll leave I, it running. I, I, I love it. I'm sure they'll hang up soon enough. As long as you guys can hear me, I can continue talking. Yeah, keep going. All right. So yeah, I think the worst advice, there we go. Good timing. I think the worst advice uh, that anyone could give an investor over the long term is to invest a lot of money in physical gold and silver. And the reason for that is it, it's so inefficient. It's unreal. People should check out the webinar because, you know, I actually go through all the maths in that webinar. And when you actually understand how much money you're leaving on the table by investing, say, 100% of your gold and silver allocation into physical, you'll be shocked. You'll, you'll, I mean, to hand over 20% of your profits just for the pleasure of being able to stroke that gold and silver uh, at home when, number one, you can no longer travel anywhere in the world because you're worried about someone walking through the door and stealing your gold and silver. And the, the biggest thing about physical gold and silver that really scares me from, a, uh, from an investor perspective is you know, we live in an ever expanding world. We live in a world where you've got access. I'm in Colombia, Medellin right now, and I'm talking to you over this amazing technology for us to have a conversation via video. That's unbelievable. And yet with physical gold and silver, when you own $50,000 of physical gold and silver, and let's say the wealth transfer happens and it's worth $500,000, right. and you're in London, for example, London's a bad example because it's a big market, but we'll use it for now. If you're in London, for example, your sale price on that gold and silver is no longer the market price because the market is global. Your sale price is the local London sale price. So if all the bullion dealers in London get together and go, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna only offer 30% less than, than spot, you're screwed. Whereas, and I know for a fact, you're not going to strap that gold and silver to your body and try and fly to Dubai to sell it at that time. Uh, right. so, so you're now limited, you're now, the problem with physical gold and silver is you're now limited to the local market within which you're playing in. Uh, and people don't talk about that, you know, people just, people don't ever talk about uh, the risks of that. And I cover this in, there's 20, 20, 20 real disadvantages that I think are huge on, on gold and silver and physical ownership. Uh, 
And so I, I cover them in the webinar. But that, that, I think, is one of the biggest ones, that being tied into that local market and not having the flexibility to move. I see. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Man, I, I'm, I'm thinking we need, to, we need to get together with the, uh, the, uh, the gold cartel here in America and like start to own it, Mark. Like, we we yeah, own so, it. So how much should, should, I, should Scott and I invest in our QRPs in gold and silver if we were going to invest? Uh, if you were going to use the physical route, I would say five to ten percent of your portfolio, or whatever you wanted to. No, no, no let's not go ETFs. ETFs. Because I, ETF. I want to keep that eighteen percent. I would say twenty percent of your of, of whatever you uh, of your net worth. Twenty percent of net worth. Okay, so, yeah. um, and then the other eighty percent allocation. How would you divvy that up between stocks, bonds, would, real estate? I would do I would do forty percent on real estate, forty uh, percent on prime real estate, and forty percent on the U.S. stock market as an index. As an index, in S and P. Yeah. Or a bunch yeah. of, or just or diversify your indexes. No, I would just. I mean, I think the simplest thing for people to do is the Vanguard five hundred index. Do you know what's hilarious about this, guys? They've now actually come to the door. So, <laughs> <laughs> Man, they're looking awesome. for you. They are looking for you. I have no idea. Just give like, them a shout out. Hey, it's not here. Yeah, just say, no. I, I, like, I don't have any physical gold and silver. It's all in the ETF. That's what it is. You see, this is what happens. They knock on your door when, you travel, when, you, when you've got physical gold. That's why I travel with no physical gold on me uh, at any time. Um, just want to make that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm nervous right now, Mark. I mean, I, this is like, this could be like a real version of uh, Narcos or like, you know, like he's in, he's in Colombia, man. He, people I are knocking know. on his door. What the heck? I know. He, I, he said it's, it's way safer than people think though. Okay. Mark, I, listen, we, we have to have a, we have to have a plan. If something happens, we have to like drop this call fast so they don't try to get back to us. Right. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I think, <laughs> I think you guys are fine. It's actually really, really safe in, uh, in, in Colombia. Um, and Medellin, I think they're just trying to figure out when I want them to clean this hotel room. I think that's yeah. what it is because uh, it's 11 a.m. here. So, so how do I, I mean, like, did I miss it? How am I cash flowing gold? So we, we utilize options to do that. We utilize, uh, we use ETFs to buy and then we use options. Okay. So am I... It's in the way that we do options. And I think a lot of people, you know what I'm going to, I'm actually just going to get, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead and send them away. So just give me, give me one minute. Okay. No problem. Mark, I think, uh, I mean, I think that that's a pretty cool strategy to, to, uh, use options, especially on something, you know, that you're okay keeping for a long time, right. You know, gold or silver, especially if it's yeah. going to go up 8% a year, just on its own. Now you're cash flowing. Have you ever done options on stocks? Have you ever done like sold, sold options? I've, I've learned about options and essentially like I've, there's been, there's been a few option strategies that were really interesting to me. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I just thought, well, you know, at the point in time when I had like money to invest in options, I was not going to get 300 to a thousand percent on that money. <laughs> right, so, right. Doesn't right. make sense for me. But right. I could I could understand a few you know, you know, for people that twelve percent was interesting. You know what the the cool thing about like options like there, there was a I can't remember the guy's name. Oh, it was I think it was uh, Wade Cook back in the day, right? Like he's he's he wrote a book, and I think he went to jail too. You know, like because yeah, he, he was involved yeah. in like insider trading, whatever. But he had this pretty cool little, um, you know, like a little strategy where he would. He would say, hey, buy a stock. So like, you know, pick, pick your stock. I'm going to pick, let, let's pick Disney, right? So I pick a Disney stock, but he had this whole formula on how to do it, right? And so then you would sell a call option, which gives somebody the right to buy your stock right. at a certain price, right? So basically he would get a premium today of like, let's say a dollar or $2. And maybe that was like 10% of the stock price, right? So he had this whole formula, but like he would try to get 10%. Uh, some some number and like they could buy the stock from him at that price if the stock went up but i think part of his strategy uh, you know like he, he did something but anyway he did something that ended up in jail but anyway his, his whole deal was like he would sell the call option on the stock and like it was almost like leasing the the stock out and it i mean like i'm not saying he went to jail because of that strategy he went to jail because of insider trading or whatever but it sounds a lot like, you know, like pretty cool idea to, to buy gold 
maybe even an ETF gold and then kind of sell the option on that, that index. That sounds pretty cool. So I just, funnily enough, you know, we think that we're so advanced over in London and, and, and in America, they have an app here where you can actually decide anything that you want to buy. And a guy gets on a bike, goes and shops for you, picks it up, drops it off to your, to your door for a dollar 50. So that's what it was. I was oh trying to gosh. think, I, just, I completely forgot that I placed the order. Um, anyway, uh, so as far as ETFs and options go, there's people have a lot of fear about options. And I think that they have that fear because of the way that options have been taught for so long. They've been taught from a speculator's perspective. Uh, right, when, right. Cause like you always read 80% of options expire worthless. Right. And we are actually on the reverse side of that. Right. So when we're using options like an investor, which is, you know, options are actually created by market makers to take advantage of speculators. So we're just sitting on the idea of we want to actually own the asset. We're not trading with thousand dollars. Uh, we want to own the asset and we want to just generate that premium off the top uh, of that. And in fact, our main goal is to stay in the asset and we're utilizing the options to just generate a short-term premium uh, on average once a month, but it averages out to about 1% to 2% a month over the year. Interesting. I, didn't, I didn't catch what you were saying about the previous option strategy, but... Um, so. well, I was just basically saying like there was a, there was a guy back, I don't know, in the... 90s maybe early 2000s and uh his his strategy was he was teaching like buy it buy a stock that you know that you want to hold for a long term yeah. and then you know basically sell the call option which gives the the investor who bought the option from you the right to buy it at that price before the expiration date which you know is typically like 30 days away or within 30 days so he would get that call that call premium and basically he was using that to cash flow his stocks. And, um, you know, essentially he, I think he was trying to target like, you know, if you could buy a stock for in the $20 range and then sell that option for $2, which I always had a hard time finding stocks like, like that, that, that seemed like a too steep of a premium. But that said, you know, essentially, you, you know, like, I, I guess maybe he, I don't know, maybe he was yeah. just making money from yeah. the information. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's, actually, that's a covered, just, just, just to clarify on that, that's a, that's a covered call strategy. It's a fantastic strategy where, where people get completely screwed up on that strategy is they try and do what you're saying, which is $20 stocks and $2 premiums, right? When they're going for that 10% a month returns, that's when the stocks are so volatile. Uh, that's when you can get screwed. But covered calls have been around for decades and that's part of what we use. We just do it a lot safer than, than, than the way that's uh, been done traditionally. Yeah. Hey, Manesh, I got a question about a side hustle strategy. Okay. So my, my first job out of college was helping dentists buy and sell dental practices. Like okay. a dental, right. And I'd go to these, uh, you know, dental conferences and there was always that one guy there that would buy scrap gold and silver fillings from mm -hmm. the dentists. Right. And then everywhere I'm driving around town, we buy gold. Right. Um, and you get the things in the, you know, we buy your gold, we'll buy your gold. Mm -hmm. Is this a real legitimate good idea? I mean, can you make a lot of money buying scrap and then selling it at spot? Uh, I'm pretty sure that that is a huge business. Um, and people do that everywhere in the world. Every single country has an operation like that. Um, and it's, just, it's the jewelry business is almost like, the reverse of that will buy it at spot and sell it at such a premium. It's unreal. Uh, right. So yeah, I mean, yes, those businesses exist. And if you can buy a bunch of scrap gold and silver and just store it, you know, that's, that's the time where if you can buy that scrap for 30, 40% less than spot prices, because somebody doesn't know the value of it, that's the time where you can stock up on your physical, right? But when you're actually buying it at the market price, you want to use a smarter strategy. Based on my opinion. And so I always say to people, you know, it depends what you want. If you want the physical gold and silver because you think Armageddon's going to happen and you don't believe that you're going to need food and a gun more in that scenario, then buy as much physical gold as you want. If your goal is just to make money and profit from the cycles, then there's a smarter way of doing it. All right. Fantastic. Well, Manesh, this has really been a phenomenal podcast and your mentorship has been 
so valuable, but I'm going to ask you for one more tip, the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Um, I think, uh, I think knowledge is, is fantastic, but I think not we should operate, which is what I love about podcasts, right? Because not podcasts allow you to have just in time knowledge. You can search a podcast, have a look at what you're interested in and re and, and get the information that you need at the time that you need it rather than reading books on books on books with things that are completely irrelevant to you right now. So instead of a, instead of a knowledge resource, cause I think you guys have got that covered. What I want to do is, um, implore people to go and look at just come up with your net worth and then figure out how much you've got in which bucket in real estate. How much have you got in gold and silver? How much have you got? How much have you got in cash? How much have you got in the stock market? And that will give you a great idea of how you're balanced. Uh, and based on my research, a 40% in the U S stock market via an index, like a Vanguard index, uh, 40% in prime real estate, and 20% in gold and silver has generated really great returns since 1972. Uh, and just see where you are, because I just don't think most people know where they are. Where they are. And if you're in cash, you're in the, in the most fast and uh, confirmed devaluing asset in the, in, in the world, in history, every single, uh, every single time. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't need cash. So you need some cash around. But after a while, again, it's like everything. You need a little bit of everything, but too much can become inefficient. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, check out uh, trek.co. That's T-R-E-C-K dot C-O. T-R-E-C-K dot C-O. Yeah. So okay. basically what this, what this um, service does is it helps you to collect email addresses within your content. So basically what it will do is, you know, it will help you to create buttons that you can put on your website, et cetera. Almost like a, um, it reminds me a lot like uh, lead pages with their, you know, their, their buttons, if you will. Uh, right. But essentially this is $5 a month and you can create call to action buttons. You can customize the button, et cetera, put it on your website. And it will lead to other kind of, it will generate like code that you just put on your website. You just paste it in there. And then what it will do is it will give these call to action buttons that people can click on and then you capture their email addresses, et cetera. And uh, it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. We, I think Peter Shankman gave something similar. I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah. Website. He gave the one, he gave the one that you, uh, you add to your, uh, content that you share, right? Content, I right. Yeah. That like you share. I forgot what that yeah. one was called. It's pretty cool too. But like you, you share a link and next thing you know, you're, it looks like you're on the CNN website. Right. Right. Well, this is cool. All right. Well, I think my tip of the week is the best one is learn more about Manesh at gold and silver for life.com. And he's got a webinar. You just go right to the webinar link um, and learn more. So gold and silver for life.com. Manesh, are we good? I think we're, I think we're good. I think, thank you so much for having me on here. I think, um, you know, one thing I love about podcasters, what you guys are doing is that you're open to bringing all different types of information to people. I think one of the biggest disadvantages in the world that we live in is sometimes information access to information is, is limited. And so that's what the, one of the things I'm most excited about the future on is that access to information on all levels. Uh, is becoming completely democratized and everyone can access it. And you guys are playing part of that. So thank you so much for giving me a uh, space on your platform. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to remind the listeners, uh, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it system of automating, getting paid via lenders and borrowers, geekpay.io. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash geekpay.io and get your first note for free. Um, also, the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like Amanesh Bindi from goldandsilverforlife.com is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. So please do that. All right, Scott, are we good? We're good, Mark. Let's go. Ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring.
Manesh is like, oh, boy. I knew these guys were geeky. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Manesh, enjoy, enjoy uh, Medellin. Thank you very much, guys. It was a pleasure being on this. I hope uh, it goes successfully. Let me know once it's out and we can promote it too. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll right. see you soon. Thanks, Take everybody. Care. Bye-bye.